Indian railways are the lifeline of the nation. Without them, the country simply cannot function. And nowhere more so than in Bombay, India's premier city. In 2005, it suffered the highest rainfall recorded in the city's history. A metre of rain fell in 12 hours. The deluge could not drain away fast enough, and the city suffered its worst ever flood. The suburban network was paralysed. Trains marooned, stations cut off. Over a thousand people lost their lives. India's richest, most powerful city had been strangled by the monsoon rains. But amazingly, in less than 48 hours, the trains were running again. This is the story of the Bombay Railway. Bombay was originally made up of seven islands of low-lying swamps and malaria-infested mudflats. Gifted by the Portuguese to the British, it had always been a trading city. But with the coming of the railway, Bombay began to boom. Today, some parts of the city have a population density of one million people per square mile. By 2020, Bombay is set to be the world's largest city. Six and a half million commuters travel up and down on the city's suburban rail network. It's like a small country on the move. And every day, 10,000 new immigrants swell the city's population. The Alice in Wonderland type of situation. <laughs> you have to keep on going two steps to remain where you are. We have no control over that. We are, our job is to provide transportation. And if uh, 10,000 people are coming here and they have better opportunities. Mumbai is a land of dreams. This is where the dreams are made. The dream of the British Empire was to crisscross the subcontinent with a railway that would be the envy of the world. In the heart of the city, they built Victoria Terminus, a railway station of cathedral-sized proportions, now the most photographed building in India after the Taj Mahal. It stands on the site of the very first railway line to be laid in India more than 150 years ago. The British Raj in India was merely a blip in the history of this country. The British were simply the last invaders in a catalogue of occupations. But the Indians themselves have never invaded another country in over 5,000 years. The British left in 1947. They left behind the foundations of the legal system, the civil service, the principles of democracy, and the railways. Today, India is the world's largest democracy, and it runs the greatest rail network in all Asia. And it all started here. But perhaps it was the British sense of time which was most alien to the population. Clocks and timetables were a difficult concept. But the railway revolutionized travel and introduced a British sense of time. Today, the tower clock, made by London Blockley in 1888, faces the city from the dome of the station. And it's still wound by hand. Clear 
आठवड्यातून एक दोनदा आता आम्ही चावी देऊ करून एक वेळेत द्यायचं तर ते रोप वायर तुटले पण आम्ही येतात आठवड्यातून दोन वेळात They say that when the wire broke, the counterweight fell through the ceiling of the general manager's private bathroom, destroying a fine collection of memorial plates. The tower clock has been called the Big Ben of Bombay, except it doesn't chime. After independence, the private railway companies were nationalized. Bombay changed its name to Mumbai. Victoria Terminus became the headquarters of the Central Railway and changed its name to Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, or CST for short. And its sister station at Churchgate became headquarters of the Western Railway. Between them, these two railways must carry millions of commuters in and out of the city every day. The railway is so heavily used here that almost 50% of all passenger journeys in India are either to or from Mumbai. To help keep the suburban system running, in the operation room, teams of highly trained controllers keep the trains moving. It's as complicated an operation as at any airport. The TMS, or train management system, is the very latest technology employed by the Indian railways to keep its trains running on time. We have a fairly good reputation for doing it very punctually. Our punctuality is around 97%, and we have very few cancellations. That's about 0.1% of the total running. OP Chaturvedi is one of 500 or so drivers and guards on the suburban network. OP joined the railway when life in the city was so much simpler. When 74 I came to Bombay, it was not so crowded. Trains were not running so much. It was hardly running 550 or 600 trains in 24 hours. Nowadays, running 17, 30 trains within 24 hours. Very crowded. Pressure is there. OP had already gained a science degree when he applied to the Indian Railways for a job. A coveted government position. Secure, well paid, respected. Thirty years on and now a senior driver on the Central Railway, both the city and the job have lost a little of their glitter. Less signals, less tension. More signals, more tension. Less speed. Less tension, more speed, more tension. Seventy-six, I started my training as assistant driver and four months training afterwards coming online from 76 to 2006. Means 30 years I'm running on these lines. The motorman's lobby is at the back of VT station, and it's here that drivers and guards like OP report for duty each day. Although there are numerous forms to fill out and daily notices to read on everything from track maintenance to signal changes, there's more personal information on who's retiring and who's due for a medical. <laughs> 